Welcome back to This Week in Weed. Let's take a look at this week's top stories. The prevalence of obesity in the general population is sharply lower among cannabis consumers than it is among non-users, according to an analysis published online this week in the American Journal of Epidemiology. Investigators at the Louis Meilleur Hospital in France analyzed cross-sectional data from two representative epidemiological studies of U.S. adults age 18 and older. These surveys included over 50,000 eligible respondents. Authors controlled for respondents' sociodemographic characteristics, including age, ethnicity, educational level, marital status, and tobacco use, but they did not factor into account subjects' physical activity or diet. The prevalence of obesity was significantly lower in cannabis users than in non-users, researchers reported. They added, the proportion of obese participants decreased with the frequency of cannabis use, noting that respondents who reported using the substance three days per week or more were least likely to be obese compared to those who reported no cannabis use in the past 12 months. Authors concluded, even if cannabis consumption increases appetite, people using cannabis are less likely to be obese than people who do not use cannabis. The study is the first large-scale trial to evaluate the association between cannabis use and weight in the general population. According to the Journal of the American Medical Association, the prevalence of obesity is approximately 34% among adults in the United States, contributing to 13% of total U.S. mortality. Criminal sentencing reform legislation, passed by lawmakers earlier this year, is now in effect in Arkansas. Senate Bill 750, the Public Safety Improvement Act, intends to reduce the number of nonviolent offenders incarcerated statewide by mitigating the sentences for certain low-level drug offenses. Democratic Governor Mike Beebe, who strongly backed the measure, signed it into law on March 22, 2011. The law took effect on July 27. Specific to marijuana law enforcement, the measure amends cannabis penalties so that possession of up to four ounces of pot is a criminal misdemeanor, punishable by up to one year in jail and a $1,000 fine. For first-time offenders, the new law states, the court, without entering a judgment of guilt and with the consent of the defendant, made a fur- further proceedings and placed the defendant on probation for a period of not less than one year. Under the previous law, the possession of any amount of cannabis above one ounce was a felony offense, punishable by between four and ten years imprisonment and a $25,000 fine. The new law additionally reduces criminal penalties for the possession of small quantities of marijuana with the intent to deliver from a felony offense to a misdemeanor. The law also reduces subsequent marijuana possession offenses from felonies to misdemeanors. Previously, second and third pot offenses were categorized as felonies. Defendants found guilty of violating the state's marijuana laws will still be subject to the loss of their driver's license for six months. The United States Drug Enforcement Administration has issued the final order rejecting a 2007 ruling from the agency's own administrative law judge that it would be in the public's interest to grant the University of Massachusetts a license to grow marijuana for federally regulated research. The rejection preserves the monopoly held by the U.S. National Institute on Drug Abuse on the supply of marijuana for Food and Drug Administration regulated research. In 2010, a spokesperson for the agency told the New York Times that, quote, we generally do not fund research focused on the potential beneficial medical effects of marijuana. In 2007, after extensive hearings, DEA Judge Mary Ellen Bittner opined in favor of allowing a researcher at the University of Massachusetts at Amherst legal permission to cultivate marijuana for use in FDA-approved clinical trials. She determined, there is currently an inadequate supply of marijuana available for research purposes. I therefore find that the respondent's registration to cultivate marijuana would be in the public interest. DEA Director Michelle Leonhardt initially set aside Judge Bittner's ruling in 2009. The agency's ruling may be appealed in the First Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals. Thanks for watching This Week in Weed. Make sure to come back every Thursday for the newest installment.